Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We've been studying together in the book of Acts, uh, going through the book of Acts, uh, doing a survey uh, on Sunday. I would like to, uh, if you all would mind, I would like to postpone that this week and talk about something that I think is of interest uh, to all of us, should be of interest to all of us. I hope it is. It is not my my aim to uh, entertain you in any way uh, or to uh, the purpose of this video is not to present my uh, background as an artist or to promote my bio or my my vocational history as an artist uh, uh, but I want to talk about something that's very near to my heart very interesting to me. I hope you find it interesting as well. Uh, it's And it has to do with this whole concept of drawing realistically, uh, actually drawing things the way that they appear, actually appear, rather than the way that we think they look like, which is a, has to do with a method that was developed in the 70s and by Dr. Betty Edwards called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. It's a method that I've, I taught for years in junior high, high school. Uh, I taught uh, classes through Hobby Lobby, uh, Hobby Lobby stores. I, I've taught it online. I've, I mean, over an, uh, an extended period of, of 26 years, uh, I was involved in, uh, in both uh, teaching art as well as creating art and it was sort of my second career you know after the navy while at the same time i was involved in other things as well most of you know it had to do with with uh, with animals and livestock and horses and uh, uh, helping to uh, tame wild mustangs for the Bureau of Land Management and so on and so forth. And I still am um, involved with that today. But many of my viewers have asked me, uh, on occasion I, I get the, the request of, well, Steve, can you please help me better understand how to study, why, why I'm not seeing some of the things that you are, uh, how can I come to, to understand Scripture better? How can I study it better? How can I come to better conclusions about what I reach uh, than what I reach as it concerns the Word of God? And uh, just, is there any tips you can give me as, as far as helping me to, uh, maybe I need to break some old bad habits, maybe I need to develop some new skills. <clears throat> That's, this is what I want to talk about. And so we're gonna we're just gonna put that Sunday video on Acts on hold, unless uh, the con the unless that changes uh, during the making of this video. In which case, I may talk about a few verses in Acts. But if it's but if I don't, then just know we'll be back in Acts uh, this following Sunday. Now, first, just a little bit about this whole right brain drawing percept perception. There is a tried and a true method of teaching basic drawing skills uh, to people, getting them, people who've never drawn anything before, to getting them to drawing like Da Vinci in like 24 hours, believe it or not. This is a, uh, a dynamic course. Uh, when Betty Edwards' book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, was first published, I think it was 1979, it got a lot of a positive response, uh, and to everybody's surprise, it remained on the uh, New York Times bestsellers list for nearly a year. Now, over the years since then, Dr. Edwards has revised that book three or, I think, three or four times, I'm not sure, uh, just to include advances and, and clarifications in, in the teaching techniques and the uh, underlying theory that is involved in drawing on the right side of the brain. 
Uh, the book is now widely accepted uh, by most artists. Uh, many in, are unaware of it, sadly, unfortunately. Uh, but it's, it's, today it's widely accepted by most artists, teachers, and others around the world. Now my success in using and teaching this method, you know, as far as how it benefited me and how it benefited my students, uh, the teaching methods that are contained in this dynamic meth course here uh, are largely based on the Nobel Prize winning work of Dr. Roger Sperry uh, he's since gone on, passed on, uh, but he was a neuropsychologist, a neurobiologist, and he was at Caltech, uh, California Institute of Technology in Pasadena. Now what uh, his work focused on was the lateralization of verbal, analytical, sequential functions, which for most individuals are mainly located in the left hemisphere, and the visual, spatial, perceptual, uh, perceptual functions that are mainly located in most individuals' right hemispheres. But it was also about getting the left and the right to cooperate together and work together. Basically, his idea was that each hemisphere, left and, and right brain, uh, it's a conscious system in its own right. It, uh, perceiving, uh, thinking, remembering, reasoning, uh, willing, and and feeling, sort of, sort of, you know, all at a at a characteristical human level. And both the left and the right hemisphere, uh, they can be conscious simultaneously in different, even mutually conflicting uh, mental experiences that sort of run along in parallel with one another. Now, I, I, I know this is... I don't, I don't want this to become so confusing that I lose you, you people, but uh, I see a correlation in right brain drawing and the way that we perceive the spiritual, the Christian life, okay? Uh, most activities require both modes, uh, right and left, which uh, uh, Betty Edwards terms those as R mode, L mode, uh, and each mode con contributes its special functions uh, to most tasks. This is the, the sort of the brain working as a whole, but a few activities require mainly one mode, okay? One mode. You know, without significant interference from the other mode, if that makes any sense. Drawing is, is one of these activities. Now, I also believe that studying the Word of God is one of these activities, but we're going to get to that. I, I hope to get to that. Uh, so there's L mode, left brain, the left hemisphere, which is mainly rational, cognitive, uh, analytical, uh, it's like balancing your checkbook, okay, on the left side of your brain. You know? we, we don't want creative, intuitive uh, checkbook balancing really uh, on the left side of the brain. That's not what the left side, of, uh, or that's not what the right side of the brain wants. That's, uh, as far as the creativity, that's right. We, we don't want the left involved. We want step-by-step -step verbal numerical, sequential analysis, that's, that's, that's the left brain, okay? Now, as far as the right brain, the right hemisphere goes, 
it's it's all about visual, uh, spatial perceptual perceptual reality. It's it's facial recognition. Uh, we don't analyze a face. We don't uh, name each uh, feature like that's an eye, that's a nose, that's a mouth. We don't do that. Artists don't do that. Good artists don't do that. Uh, but the, the right brain can recognize the face of a friend. It's instant. Uh, it's all at once. Uh, applying the research to, to teaching basic uh, drawing skills, applying that to our discipline when it comes to Bible study, I think is very helpful. Now, we need to find ways to bypass when it comes to drawing, now I'm talking about drawing, we need to find ways to bypass the verbal uh, left brain L mode system, which in our culture, that it tends to dominate. You know, ways, ways that would allow the subdominant R mode, right brain, uh, non-verbal system, to actually come forward to perform a task for which it's, it's especially suited designed, I'd say, uh, you know, drawing a perceived subject, drawing what's truly out there as, as opposed to what we think something looks like. That's why you see artists looking at what they're drawing and they're, they're not looking at the paper. There's no information on the paper giving their brain any ability to, you know. Anyway, she devised this rule, okay, to solve this problem a rule that forms the basis of all of the exercises in, that, that, that you go through to learn this method. In order to gain access to that subdominant, uh, somewhat hard to access, uh, right brain R mode, the nonverbal visual perceptual system of the brain, it's necessary to present one's own brain with a task that the dominant verbal system L mode will turn down. It, 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 it doesn't compute with L mode and, and vice versa. Our brains are very interesting things. A primary example of, of, of applying this rule is the upside down drawing when you know when you're presented with an up down in, in, upside down image if you're going to draw something turn it upside down and just draw the lines draw what's there as opposed to drawing it right side up or that you now you've got a ears eyes nose mouth and you look away from what you're looking at and you and you say, well, I know what an eye looks like, and you draw an eye, but then it turns out it doesn't look like an eye, and then you go to the teacher and you say, well, you know, like they did to me, they come to me, well, Steve, I, you know, doesn't look like an eye. I mean, I'm, I'm wanting it to look like, but I know what an eye looks like. See, you have a subject out here that you're looking at to draw, and you're drawing what you see. That's, that's right brain, okay? Now, if you take your eye off of what you're looking at, and, and you just... You're looking at a blank canvas. You, there's no information there for your brain to process. So what you're doing is you're not drawing what you, what's really out there. You're drawing it the way you think it looks rather than the way it actually appears, if that makes sense. We do the same thing when it comes to Bible study because that's we're accustomed to functioning in that left brain, not that right creative artistic sort of mode. I mean, you know, we're not, you know. And I need to, I need to say right up front before I even go any further here that uh, this is not something that you have. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that we all have to become great artists to be great Bible students. I'm not saying that at all. Not at all, okay? I'm just saying that this does help you understand the importance of certain functions of the brain that are in the, just the same functions of the brain that are involved in Bible study that's involved in drawing. You know, the left hemisphere basically says, in effect, you know, I, I don't do upside down. You know, it's too hard to name the parts and, and, and things are hardly ever upside down in, in the real world. I mean, it's not useful. And, you know, and if you're going to do that, well, then I'm out of here. I'm done. And, you know, 
the, the dominant verbal system bows out and the subdominant visual mode is allowed to take on the task for which it's, it's well suited. What artists do is they make their hand do what their eye sees. It's, again, I, I don't, I never taught people how to draw. What I did was I taught them how to see. And because they already know how to draw. Even you know how to draw. You may think you don't, but you do. Seeing and drawing spaces called negative spaces is a lot easier than drawing positive space. Drawing what's not there as opposed to what's there it is oftentimes much, much easier. You know, just like the upside down because you're tricking your brain. Seeing and drawing relationships called perspective and proportion, that sort of thing, it just sort of takes care of itself whenever you are actually looking at what you're drawing and you're drawing what's really out there and you're not taking your eyes off of it to just allow, to allow your mind to convince you that, well, I, I know what that looks like. I don't have to look at it. Seeing and drawing the whole called the gestalt, the, 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 the thing itself, the essential nature of the observed subject, which uh, emerges spontaneously from the first four uh, component skills, like you, you, know, you, you take them through, you teach them line, uh, edges, shapes, values, and, and, and then proportion tends to take care of itself. These, these component skills present the student's brain with tasks that L mode will turn down. We basically stop making stuff up, okay? Drawing things the way that we think they appear rather than the way that they actually appear. And when you, and when you show a student that he can do this, he's quite impressed with himself. He's discovered something within him that's, that's lied dormant. It's there, it's been there all the time. They just never, no one ever took the time to show him how that worked. You know, in drawing realistically, we, we never name parts because our minds have the preconceived notion as to what things ought to look like. Well, I know what a tie looks like. I know what a, you know, a, I know what a car looks like. I know what a, tree looks like and so on and so forth. I know what a nose looks like. So learning to draw then turns out to be something more than more than learning to draw. It's it's a matter of of perception. Paradoxically, learning to draw means learning how to make a mental shift from L mode to R mode. I never ever ever taught my students not one in 26 years, never did I teach anybody how to draw. I taught them how to see things differently, to really see what is out there and draw it, rather than make something up that is not really there. And then, and then so many of my students used to wonder, just, you know, why doesn't, why isn't what I'm drawing, why doesn't it look like What's out there? So, you know, you draw something the way it actually appears rather than, than draw something the way that you think that it ought to look. And that is what a, uh, a person trained in drawing does. And this ability to, to shift thinking modes at will has important implications uh, for thinking in general and for creative problem solving in particular, and, and dearly beloved, it comes in great when it comes to Bible study. And believe it or not, I, I mean, well, well, it's just, it is, it's a strange, there's a strange but interesting parallel between this drawing method and how that the right and in left brain hemispheres function and how we study the Word of God.
Now you can see as the, I, I put this up here on the screen here that uh, we're looking at these, these two hemispheres and left, left brain, right brain functions and it's listed. You, you can read, uh, hopefully, hopefully you can read this, the, how the left brain functions through uh, analytic thought, logic, language, science, and math, that sort of thing. You know, if you want to you want to be a rocket scientist, if, <clears throat> if you become a rocket engineer, you know, you design the next, uh, I don't know, uh, space station or whatever, you know, most likely you are a left brain sort of person. Of course, the right brain functions different, differently. It's the, the, there's a holistic thought associated with it. Intuition, creativity, art, music. I mean, if you're into music, if, if that's, you know, even sports, you know, a lot of the uh, children, you know, are inclined, most, many children are inclined either one way or another, some both, I mean, in, in some cases. What we don't want to do is we don't want to really, what we're not wanting to do is we're really, if you look at this, these two hemispheres, and this is just my opinion, we do not really want much of our right brain, this is my right, this is my right, yeah, I'm, I don't know if the camera's reversed, this is my right, uh, which is also your, should be your right, if it's left, sorry about that, the camera's set wrong. I don't want right brain functions, folks, involved really in my Bible study. Uh, because it's, it's, it, it doesn't involve facts, it involves, in, it's not like the left brain, which is analytical, logical. It, that's what I want involved in my Bible study. I don't, I don't want to, to rely on holistic thought or, or uh, intuition or, or creativity, something that you know, I invent. I'm showing you this picture upside down. I don't have an app to draw for you and I'm not gonna draw on the wall. Uh, I'm not here to entertain you anyway. I'm just here to explain the method and how I believe it relates to our spiritual lives. But this is a simple picture of a horse upside down. Now, right side up, if you were to turn this right side up, which I'll do for you, I'll try to do for you here. This is how most people would look at that and draw it. They, they, they look at, they'll look at that and they'll draw that. And, uh, and they, what they, they say, well, that's, there's the, there, that's a head, there's the horse's head, there's his tail, there's his, his, his legs. And right away, they're involved in the wrong thinking pattern here because they're drawing it I guess it would be a lot simpler if I just, instead of using the horse, if I just brought a portrait uh, analogy into this. We're drawing a portrait, okay? And of course, as I mentioned, it's, there's a, a huge difference in drawing what's really out there than, than drawing what you think some, something looks like. Your brain's going to say, I know what an eye looks like. Well, everybody knows what an eye looks like. You know, I mean, it's just, it's kind of first grade, kindergarten, you know. We know what a nose looks like, you know. You know, try to picture, you know, a kindergarten or first grade student uh, drawing a picture. And, uh, and it's kind of comical. It's cute. But it's not real. They're not, they're not really drawing on their right side of the brain. Of course, totally uh, excusable at, at that age. I mean, we can't require them. To, we're not. No one's asking them to do that. But they're naming parts. 
you know, we dog wagging its tail. Every kid knows how to draw draw a dog wagging its tail. Now, I mean, but the, but the tail is not going to look like the real dog's tail, if you know what I'm saying. The thing about drawing upside down is it tricks your brain. Because now you're just, you're wanting to look at this as nothing but lines. You've turned it upside down. It's no longer a horse in your mind. It's just lines. Oh, just lines. And anybody can draw lines. And you would be surprised. You can, I, I challenge you, try this sometime. Find something like this sketch, turn it upside down, forget the, trick your brain into, into forgetting what it is that you're actually drawing. You're just drawing, convince yourself that you're just drawing lines and just draw the lines, just draw the lines and then turn it right side up. Now it may not look exactly like Da Vinci or Michelangelo, but what you're gonna find out is you're gonna find out that it's a lot more, it's a lot more accurate because you've done that. This is a, the hand I'm showing you is, is you know, it's kind of, I always use this sort of a figure, you know, this position here, usually resting on the table, and I would ask my students to draw their hand. If they're right-handed, draw their left hand. If they're left-handed, draw their right hand, and just draw what they see. Now, usually what you get back at first is you get back something that's, that's where they've completely taken their eyes off of their hand and they've just kind of, you know, simplified everything, you know. And it's, you don't see all the little curves, the little ins and outs, all the little bumps, all the little cracks and crevices, and you don't, you don't, you don't really see all that. It's just a smooth, straight line. It's kind of, you know, it's sort of abstract, if you know what I'm saying. This is ne a good example of negative shape. So now I'm gonna put this up here. You're either seeing a lamp stand or you're seeing two faces staring at each other. Now when you're, your mind looks at this and your, your brain says one, one minute, your brain, it will go back and forth with you. Your brain will, will go, oh, well, that's a lamp stand. And then, you, and then it'll, you'll go, oh no, that's two faces. And then, oh no, that's a lamp stand. Oh no, that's two faces. It just goes back. You can make, literally at will, make your, make your brain go back and forth looking at positive and negative spaces. What's important about this in drawing is, is that, that it's often easier to draw the negative space than it is the positive space. If you looked at the two faces as the positive space, it would be much easier to draw the negative shape, which is the vase, which amounts to line, which is what you're, you're making your hand do what your eye sees. You're not making anything up. You're not inventing anything. And with a little practice, you can do this. Another picture of a sketch of a horse. I uh, just downloaded this from the internet. It's not something I drew. Uh, probably as old as I am today, and as long as it's been really since I was involved in drawing, I doubt I could probably draw it as good as this. Or maybe I could draw it better. I don't know. I just really almost don't care. <laughs> you know, uh, art was, uh, there was a time in my life where I ate, drank, and slept art. Okay, it was just, it was my vocation. That's what I did. Uh, I don't do that anymore. And you will get rusty, as they say, for lack of practice. If you don't keep, no matter what it is you do, I don't care what it is. I, you never acquire some skill and then you just stay good at it if you don't practice. It's kind of like shooting or, or any, other, any sports or anything else. I put this up here to show you that this is just a, a quick sketch of a horse running. And if you notice, there's lines on top of lines. It's, it's really kind of rough. 
it's it's uh you got light lines here you got heavier lines here you got uh it's in pretty good proportion okay if you look at the space between the legs his front legs and his and his back legs if you look at that sort of almost a square sort of a space in between look at that as it, that's negative, that's what you'd call negative space, but look at it as positive. Get your brain to looking at that as a positive space. You're, you're, you're actually drawing what's not there, and it's, it turns out it's a lot easier. And now if you, if you did this along the whole bottom of the sketch, and you drew the negative shapes that are in between these legs, one of them being very small on the back leg, a little sort of a, so it looks like a slice of pizza there. That, that one, by drawing what's not there, you wind up with what's there. If that makes any sense. And, and it's much easier to do. Same with the chair, the reason I'm showing you the chair. Look at, don't look at the chair, look at the negative space, the spaces in between the chair. That is what you draw. That's what you draw. Surely you can you can see or try to. Surely to some extent you comp you can comprehend just how much easier it would be to draw these little tiny negative shapes in within this chair than to draw the chair itself. The reason upside down drawing is so helpful to when it comes to this whole method of drawing on the right side of the brain is, as I mentioned before, it's, it's, uh, your, your brain just doesn't seem to be as threatened by the thought that, oh my gosh, there's a, that is, that, man, that is one incredible looking horse and I, there is no possible way, you, see, you've already, you've already, shot yourself in the foot right from the start, if you say, well, I, that's just too hard. I can't draw that. Well, you can. You can. You can draw every bit of that if you, if you take the time to draw what's there. Now, as soon as you, you decide to stop looking at that horse and draw something that, well, I know what, I know what that horse's nose looks like. doesn't work. Da Vinci said, there are those who see, those who are shown to see, and those who cannot see. And he was referring to drawing. I'm gonna say that that same principle refers to the Christian experience, not just in Bible study, but in your walk. Drawing what's really out there rather than what's not there or what you think something looks like Surely you can see how that these techniques, these principles, uh, this method is sort of eerily, uncannily similar. You know, we're talking about lines, shapes, negative uh, sh shapes, positive shapes, edges, values, proportion. But all of that has to come together, but it has to come together a certain way because we draw what's there, not what's not there and we have to train our minds to do that and when we go to study scripture we oftentimes will just make assumptions as to what's true we'll make assumptions as to what's really there we'll, we'll be drawing in a sense from the text something that's not there and we're missing seeing what's there <laughs>